RuneScape is a massive old game, and there's so much we don't know about it. Today, we take a look at some of the mysteries that have puzzled even RuneScape's most devoted players for years, sometimes even decades. Our first mystery is for the ladies. According to my YouTube analytics, there's about five of you watching. So actually, let me rephrase this. Our first mystery of the day is for the ladies and guys with female characters. Did you know that the female player model in RuneScape used to look hotter? Wow, never thought that was a sentence that would come out of my mouth, but I'm not kidding. Back in May of 2005, Jagex did a weekly update where female models were given, in their words, a slight nip and tuck, which essentially means plastic surgery. Immediately after the update, it was obvious players didn't seem to like it, with quotes from the forums like, now everything in the world is going slut, and they do sort of look as if one punch would snap them. So Jagex did a follow-up post addressing the concerns. They decided to fix things not by removing the model, but by giving every everyone essentially a free shopping spree. For the next week, the makeover mage, hairdresser, and Thessalia's clothes shop were all made free. Unfortunately for Jagex, that still wasn't enough, and they reverted the female model back to what it was just a week or so later. Now that's where the mystery comes in. There are no surviving screenshots or copies of the cache from this change. When I mention the cache, which will come up a few times in this video, I mean the hidden files you download every time you play RuneScape. The RuneScape wiki team has dug through a bunch of old cache versions and found some cool stuff which I talked about a few weeks back, which I'll mention again at the end if you want to see that video. Now if they had a copy of the cache from the time of this update, they could decompile it and see what the player model looked like, but because they don't, nobody knows what this character model looked like and chances are we never will. Moving on, I remember playing RuneScape in middle school and my buddies telling me about all these RuneScape secrets they found, like a hidden wilderness cave with party hats or that they found a way to get through the Priftonus gates and see inside. Well, what about a giant worm that would carry you out of a mine if you were there too long. That honestly sounds the most made up of all, except maybe it wasn't. A few early RuneScape guides make references to things like a disgruntled anvil or giant worm random event. There's no footage of them, but they at some point existed because files related to them do exist in a game cache version. While digging through caches, the savage bird random was also found, which if you ask me looks absolutely terrifying. However, it was never added to the game, but would have attacked players like the swarm random event. The brownie was also found, a small brown imp random that was also scrapped. The current theory is that it would have appeared during woodcutting or thieving. Lastly, for the mystery part, there is one additional random event that we don't know much about. In the cache, every NPC is grouped by category, so all the random events are grouped together, but it turns out six of those random events were replaced with Legends Quest NPCs, and there's still one that replaced an event that hasn't been found. Based on other data, it's known that it was or would have been a fishing random event like the river troll, but without a copy of the cache from February of 2004, we'll never know what it was supposed to be. But let's talk about some mysteries that aren't hidden away in an old cache version. First, we have the Chaos Elementals letters. Jagex on occasion runs a new series on the RuneScape website called Postbag from the Hedge. Players send questions to their favorite non-player characters and receive responses. The most mysterious of all is the letters received from the Chaos Elemental, which only makes sense. It's a purple cloud with tentacles, and honestly I'm surprised he can talk at all, let alone write. At first glance, most of his letters look and sound like complete gibberish, but some players much smarter than me have been able to decipher some meaning from the letters. The letters have accurately predicted the release of future items, quests, bosses, and so on, but not everything has been deciphered, and some of what has is highly disputed. The Chaos Elemental actually just recently made a return to the post bag with a new letter just a month ago, which as far as I could find, hasn't been fully deciphered, so feel free to give a crack at it in the comments below. Have you ever searched up climbing boots on the Grand Exchange in Old School? If so, you'd see two items that look exactly the same, climbing boots and rock climbing boots. But if you were to click on rock climbing boots, you'd notice that they cost 82k, and if you put in an offer for one, they'd never buy. These are actually a joke reference to back in 2010 on RuneScape 2, when Jagex made the odd decision to bump the price of climbing boots up from 12 GP to 75 5k in just one night. Now, this isn't the only time an item was placed on the Grand Exchange, despite being impossible to buy. Back in 2007, the thingy was added to the Grand Exchange. It looked exactly like a sapphire amulet, and its examined text was simply Mabob. Like, give me that thingy Mabob, or when you can't remember something's name, but want someone to hand it to you. After players discovered it, Jagex claimed it was a joke, but it's kind of an odd joke for a number of reasons. First off, it was later removed from the Grand Exchange without much much 
explanation. I guess it could have been removed to avoid confusing players, but who knows. Second, Jagex moderator tools have been accidentally listed on the Grand Exchange in the past. For example, the DMM Ref Torso from 2017, which was presumably used by Jmods in the Deadman Mode Finals for spectating purposes. So it's possible the thingy was just another Jmod tool. Finally, Jagex used to keep the internal workings of the company very much under wraps and would lie if necessary. Remember the climbing boots from earlier? When the update changing their value was made, Jagex moderators claimed that the player with the most boots only had around 1800 pairs. But later, when the player moderator forums leaked, messages from a Jagex moderator revealed that that number was actually around 91,000. A pretty big difference. All in all, it's a very odd item, and it's likely we'll never know what it actually does. Now this next one is gonna have some spoilers for the Monkey Madness quest, but let's be real. If you haven't done it, you're just gonna watch the Slayer music guide and spacebar through all the dialogue. Face your character north, Use your hammer. <gasps> Where's the fucking hammer? So at the end of Monkey Madness, you fight a jungle demon on this platform with the help of some gnomes. After defeating it, you talk to one of the gnomes and get teleported out. Simple, right? It is, but someone figured out if you go through a trap door on the platform and then click on a crack in this statue, you'll meet a little purple monkey named Bonzera. If you speak with him, he will say, we will meet again, and then offers to teleport you off of the platform and back onto Ape Atoll like nothing ever happened. So. Why does he exist? Let's run through some theories. Theory number one, he's a Bonzi Buddy reference. What is a Bonzi Buddy, you may be asking? He's a neat little piece of software from the 90s. Remember Clippy from Microsoft Word? He's kind of like that, but for your whole computer. He can read web pages for you, inform you of the news, tell you jokes, manage appointments, and it's free. Oh, and he can collect your browsing data to know which pop-up ads to serve you. Plus, his error messages are intentionally made to look like Windows errors, so you buy the Bonzi Brothers protection software, Internet Alert. So why would of all things Jagex reference Bonzi Buddy? Well, it wasn't exactly Jagex who made the quest. It was actually coded entirely by an intern, which I'll mention again in a bit. As you may have guessed, Monkey Madness is a quest about monkeys and gorillas and I guess gnomes. Anyway, this quest came out in 2004, which is around the same time Bonzi Software went out of business after they got slammed with two back-to-back -back lawsuits. So I don't know, maybe the guy that made the quest wanted to give him a little tribute. Bonzi had yet to rise to meme status, but it was a somewhat well-known program back then. At the same time, the only evidence that could lead to this is that he wears a purple outfit, has Bonds in his name, and technically he's a virtual assistant because he helps you leave the cave. The next theory is that he was a failsafe in case someone got stuck. This this was long before the home teleport, so you could get stuck somewhere and would have to contact Jagex to get out. I can only imagine whoever was in charge of rescuing people had the best job ever. They'd probably spend all day wondering how players got stuck in these weird locations. Anyway, a gnome up top already teleports you off of the platform, so why would you need Bonzi Buddy? Well, for some reason, when you go down the trap door, the gnomes despawn. So if it is a failsafe, I honestly think it's because of the intern's broken coding. But I think the dialogue is way too specific to just be a failsafe. So I think the intern wanted to include this easter egg, but didn't know how to keep the gnome spawned up top. So he just said, screw it, the easter egg teleports you out now. But nobody knows for sure, as this mystery is still unsolved. It's kind of sad this guy never showed up in Monkey Madness 2, but hey Jagex, if you're listening, I know you're probably not, I think he should definitely be in MM3. I swear these titles are starting to sound like COD games. Achieving a 99 in RuneScape is no small task. Many skills take hundreds, if not thousands of hours to master, and that's after decades of improvements and faster methods being introduced. So players who were the first were usually well recognized by the community. Names like Blue Rose 13 x and Cursed U may come to mind for things like smithing and construction. These players both had a big head start compared to others due to the difficulty and GP needed to train both skills quickly. But what about an easier skill like fire making? Theoretically, multiple players could get 99 on the same day and you'd have no idea who got it first. Well, that's that's exactly what happened sort of. This section wouldn't have been possible without info from July the RuneScape Historian, so absolutely check his channel out in the description below. Back to the story, two players Cow Chicken and Dragoon787 got 99 fire making on the same day around the same time. It's believed Cow Chicken was first and Dragoon followed soon after. A few days after both players had achieved 99, Dragoon began making posts claiming that he was the first to 99 and also attempted to 
edit the wiki page to reflect this, but he didn't have any proof. At the same time, there wasn't necessarily much proof that Cow Chicken was first either. All players had to go on was word of mouth, as Jagex didn't keep any logs displaying who was definitely first. Even high scores could be unreliable, because even if it displayed Cow Chicken at 99 first, Dragoon technically could have gotten it first and just not logged out yet, as the high scores don't update until you log out. So debates about who was first raged on, but never really got anywhere. Even as recent as a few years ago, Dragoon attempted to defend his title on Reddit, but again, provided no proof. The closest thing we have to any evidence of who was first is this old, very poorly worded 99 fire making guide from tip.it. Here's a quick excerpt. Our king is cow chicken. Many of the 99 fire makers do not have any respect for him, and he is known to be evil and rude. Even though not all of 99 fire makers know him, plus does who know him, we must all still pay our respect to our king. Wink. Second to 99 fire making is Dragoon787, who got it at the same day as Cow Chicken. July also did a few interviews with veteran players who were familiar with the situation. Pretty much all of them unanimously said that they remember Cow Chicken being first. My bet is the evil and rude Cow Chicken was actually first, but we'll legitimately never know. So as a result, to this day, both players are credited as first to 99 fire making on the wiki. Now you can actually help solve these mysteries, and if you're interested, check out the video about the wiki's caches over on the right, or check out a video from my second channel over on the left.